This video is going to be about the math involved with electrolysis. So this is the quantitative aspect of electrolysis and electrolytic cells. And really we're going to be looking at Faraday's law and stoichiometry and how we can calculate current or how we can calculate mass. And this is just continuing 20.9 in your book. So we've talked about Faraday's constant. Now we're going to look at Faraday's law of electrolysis. So Faraday's law of electrolysis says that the amount of substance that is consumed or produced at one of the electrodes is directly proportional to the amount of electricity that is put through the cell. So this is all about dimensional analysis and using factor label method and canceling out your units. So the mass of the substance that is either formed or consumed is also proportional to its molar mass. So the higher the molar mass, uh, the more mass that you'll have producing or consuming at the electrode. And the amount of electricity that passes through the cell, this is looking at electrical charge, and that's actually measured in coulombs. So with electrolysis and stoichiometry, or dimensional analysis, um, what we have to do is we have to know a lot of different conversions and how charge is related to current and time. So it's important that you know that one coulomb is equal to one amp times one second. So a way to remember is if you remember cool it. Cool is equal to I times T. I is the abbreviation for current. Why it's I, I don't know. I didn't make it up. So Q is charge, which is in coulomb. So cool equals it, current times time. So one coulomb is one amp times one second. Or you could rearrange this and get amps compared to coulombs in seconds. A Q which is your charge, that's your number of coulombs. Current is I, that's measured in amps. An amp is one coulomb over second. So if you have 10 amps of current, you actually have 10 coulombs per second. T is gonna be your time in seconds. N, like we've talked about before, is your moles of electrons that are actually transferring, that are traveling through the wire, and F is Faraday's constant. Remember that Faraday's constant is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons, and this is on your equation sheet. Most of this that we just looked at, this is all on your equation sheet. You just need to know how to use it. Remember also that one volt is equal to one joule per coulomb. So again, one volt is one joule per coulomb. And then when you're looking at moles of electrons, just look at your balanced redox equation. So look at your, your, halves, your half reactions and figure out how many electrons are being transferred from there. So when you're calculating the mass of a substance either produced or consumed, really it's a four step process. And that's what this diagram over on the right represents. So, so to start out, the first thing you need to do is calculate the charge in coulombs. So you're looking at finding your charge. Remember that's coulombs that's equal to current times time. So start by calculating charge in coulombs. And the reason you wanna calculate charge in coulombs is because then you can use Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant compares coulombs to moles of electrons. So you can use Faraday's constant to get to moles of electrons. And then you're gonna convert your moles of electrons to the moles of whatever is either being formed or consumed using the balanced half reaction. So you can go from moles of electrons to moles of the substance and then just go from moles of the substance to grams using molar mass. So really this is just a four step process. So in order to use Faraday's law, like I said, we need to know how these relationships work out. So the charge on an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulomb. You can actually use this relationship if you need to, but really we're gonna normally use Faraday's constant. 96,000, this round, sometimes you're gonna see it rounded to 96,500, but because you have this on your equation sheet, you should use 96,485 coulombs per mole of electron. That is also equal to one Faraday. That's why it's called Faraday's constant. And then again, one coulomb of charge is transferred when one amp flows for one second. So you can remember cool it. One coulomb is equal to one amp times time. Uh, I is your current, T is your time. Or you can just rearrange this and say one amp, which is current, equals one coulomb over second. The second one is going to be very, very useful for you. This one amp is one coulomb per second because then if you have five amps, you have five coulombs per second. So we're just gonna look at an example. This is calculate the number of grams of sodium metal that will form at the cathode. So think about what it means to be at the cathode. What process is it going through? It's going through reduction. So you have sodium metal that will be forming at the cathode. So something is reducing to sodium metal. When 10 amps of current is passed through molten NaCl for a period of four hours. So let's figure out what we have here. We have a time, 
Okay, we have four hours and we have 10 amps of current. So think about that step-by-step -step process that we need to go through. The first thing we need to do is figure out how many coulombs we have. So we have time, we have current, remember cool it. Coulombs equals current times time, but amps is coulombs per second. So we need to make sure we get hours to seconds. What I actually do is I just do one whole dimensional analysis problem. So what I actually do is I write the half reaction so we know that it's Na plus going to Na because we have NaCl. So Na plus is being reduced to Na because we're at the cathode. So I start with four hours. I start with my time. Current is actually used as a conversion factor because amps is coulombs per second. I said that was going to be important. So you have four hours, convert it to seconds. So I, I used a little shortcut and I said 3600 seconds is equal to one hour because it is. But if you want to go hours to minutes, minutes to seconds, that's fine. So I went hours to seconds, so my hours cancel out. Then I used my current, so this is my current, this is I, to go from seconds to coulombs. Remember I said amps is coulombs per second. So I use that to convert to coulombs. You can use current to convert between coulombs and time. That's what current is used for. Then I had coulombs. Well then if you remember the second step is to use Faraday's constant to get to moles of electrons. So my coulombs cancel, I get to moles of electrons. Then I'm going to use my half reaction to get from moles of electrons to moles of Na from this half reaction. One mole of electron is one mole of Na. Then I use one mole of Na to get to grams of sodium using the molar mass. So again, just the four steps. I started by finding my number of coulombs. That was this first, these first three steps. Then I used Faraday's constant. Then I used the balanced half reaction. Then I used molar mass. And what you get is 34.3 grams of sodium. So notice how it's just all dimensional analysis. It's just all math. That's all this last video is, is just math. So the whole point of electrolysis, really the biggest use of electrolysis is electroplating. And I talked a little bit about electroplating in class, but electroplating is important because you can actually plate a metal onto any object. So silver plating, for example, is done when you have a piece of silver at the anode and you have just some object, some metal object as the cathode, and then you have a solution of silver ions. The reason this is important is because at the anode, your silver is going to oxidize into Ag+, and then the Ag plus is able to uh, reduce onto this metal object, and you're going to then get a thin layer of silver covering the entire cathode because the Ag plus is going to reduce onto the cathode. Notice, though, this requires a power source. So electroplating requires a power source because normally this is not spontaneous, so you need some power source like a battery in order for this to work. So with electroplating, we can use active electrodes, okay, like we use a battery, uh, the active electrodes are like what we looked at in the last uh, slide. We plate the metal. Okay? We plate the metal, we put a coating over. Usually we use silver or copper. Now there's actually this video. This is actually on the playlist already. It's on our, our Unit 11 playlist. And you can actually watch this. It's like a minute long. They actually show you how you can plate copper onto a key. So you can actually, and you could definitely do it at home, you need a battery, you need a piece of copper, which you can buy at like Home Depot or Lowe's, and you need a key. And then you can actually electroplate copper onto a key, and that's actually what people do, is they just electroplate it, and then they, you know, create something that looks probably more expensive than it really is. So another use of uh, electrolytic cells is when you actually want to refine a piece of metal. So you're actually using electrolysis to purify a metal. So an example would be, um, like this diagram shows, we have an electrode that's impure copper. So it's not pure. We don't know what's in it, but it's not pure. So what we actually can do is we can put a piece of copper on the other side, a pure piece of copper, and what's going to happen is that all of these metals are actually going to oxidize from the anode, and then only the copper ions will plate onto the pure copper, and then we've actually purified this anode and we've put all the pure copper onto this cathode. It's another way that electrolysis is used in real life. 